Hello and welcome. You're watching Business Today Television. I'm Sakshi Batra and this is BTS. That's Behind the Scenes, a show where we share a sneak peek into the latest issue of the Business Today magazine with all our viewers. Joining in on this edition with me are three of my colleagues. Uh, first up, Surbhi joins in. She's the economy editor for Business Today magazine and covers a whole lot of um, you know sectors within the economy space. And we're going to be discussing something which is in the news headlines right now, and that is on the online gaming space with her. Uh, also joining in is uh, Neetu with me, and uh, Neetu covers the pharma sector extensively, and she's the senior editor here, and uh, she's going to give us an entire lowdown on what to expect in the pharma sector when it comes to CIPLA and its future, especially you must have been looking at a lot of uh, companies uh, being in the fray for uh, taking over CIPLA now. So what does this mean for the company at large and also the pharma sector as a whole? So we're going to be discussing about that with her. And also Ashish Rukhya now joins in and uh, we're going to be discussing all about markets, especially the primary market space this time around, the IPO space that is clearly buzzing. And what do you expect in the remaining months of the financial year with Ashish as well? So welcome to all of you and thank you so much for taking the time out for this discussion. And now to give a glimpse of this magazine to all our viewers, this is how the cover issue really looks like. And it's all about the online gaming sector and anything that you'd like to know as to where, what is the future of this entire space uh, and uh, Surbhi is going to give us some uh, more insights on this. Uh, so let me kickstart this discussion with you, Surbhi. We remember the, how this uh, two and a half, three billion dollar Indian online gaming industry, it was growing at a very fast pace just before the GST Council's bouncer really came off. And a lot of crores of uh, notices were being sent to all these uh, gaming companies that have uh, somehow uh, threatened to derail the sector and put brakes on its growth as well. Help us understand, uh, you know, what is it and why are they getting so many GST notices now? Hi, Sakshi. Thank you for the, having me on the show. And so, yes, the online gaming sector, there's news stories about it every day in every newspaper and on every channel. But the issue that we've seen in the sector, it's while it's arisen in the last couple of months, it's been a long standing issue on how the sector should be taxed or, you know, while the industry has been saying that it should be at 18% and only on the amount which a player pays as the platform fee or the money they play for the entering the game, the government believes that this is, you know, like gambling or betting because real money is involved. And so they want to charge a 28% GST on the amount that is deposited into a player's wallet. So this issue has been going on for the last couple of years. In fact, you know, since 2017-18, if you look at the kind of notices that are being sent out now. And uh, with the GST Council taking a formal decision and the rate notification also taking place on October 1, it has further cemented the government's position. And if you see, uh, there are about 1 lakh crore of notices that have been sent out to the industry industry uh, to a number of players, whether it's Gamescraft, which is already fighting a case in the Supreme Court on it, or um, Dream 11 in Nazara. So, uh, but the what the Revenue Department has been saying is that even prior to October 1, whatever online gaming real money was involved, they have to pay a 28% GST because at that time it was to be seen as a betting or gambling because money was involved. So this is where the problem lies in the sector. Absolutely, Surbi. Now, help us understand, you know, what is the growth potential then for the sector after the GST uh, Council decision of imposing 28% tax on these companies? There were initial reports that were pegging the growth of this industry if it had uh, to continue to uh, grow at this run rate at $8.6 .6 billion uh, kind of levels by FY27. Will that level now get derailed or somehow get slowed down deviation from those estimates now? Oh, absolutely. So now a lot of investors, they're having thoughts about how they want to take forward investments in the sector. A lot of companies are going into restructuring, layoffs, some smaller firms have shut down. So it's, you know, the sector was being seen as a sunrise sector, but now it seems like, you know, it's become a foggy day for, for this sector. So um, they're trying to talk to the government and Meti to see what to do. But the government believes that, you know, this is turning into a kind of a social problem, especially in smaller cities, etc. And it doesn't want to encourage in this these kind of games. And at the end of the day, you know, their rejoinder is that, you know, it's the 
ultimate player who has to pay the tax because it's an indirect tax so if the player is interested these companies will obviously you know they'll obviously log in and play these games and pay the tax so the company should not be so worried but yes the sector has seen a lot of disappointment and it's looking at how to proceed further okay we shall keep an eye out on how the sector really looks at uh, uh, you know the potential changes that they have to undergo and uh, what this really means for the long term growth of the sector as well there is a lot of development news uh, that keeps coming in and we will continue to tap onto that news and continue to discuss more with you but uh, let me now uh, bring in neetu into the discussion and get uh, started with the pharma space as well um, especially when it comes to the third largest pharma company by say, and that is sipla um, you know it's 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 a company that has uh, been here for uh, years uh, in fact centuries as well and um, we want to know uh, from neetu as to what really happens now from uh, you know on sipla uh, we are looking at a lot of companies including torrent pharma dr reddies eyeing uh, to take over sipla why is this happening why are so many firms really interested and why is it such an important company Uh, thank you sakshi so i would like to explain about uh, sipla sipla is uh, why are so many companies are looking at this particular uh, com- pharmaceutical companies uh, because sipla is not just another pharmaceutical company for india because it it has a legacy it has an importance for india so it was uh, basically established in 1935 uh, by khwaja abdul hamid who was also a chemist and he was a uh, he was a disciple of mahatma gandhi so sipla it holds a significant place in india's freedom movement and it boasts a rich history so that is one of the reasons uh, why this company is very important for the country and secondly let's come to the present day business so sipla is the third largest generic pharmaceutical company in india and uh, it has a diverse portfolio and it leads in various sectors including respiratory drugs urology anti infectives and chronic diseases So in the fiscal year, year if you uh, look at the numbers in 2022-23, Sipla recorded a uh, total revenue of around 22,753 uh, crores, and uh, it was uh, up from uh, 21,763 crores in the previous year. So it this company basically operates in around 85 markets with 47 manufacturing facilities globally. So it specializes in anti-retroviral and anti-infective drugs as well as therapeutic segments like urology and cardiology. So this company holds a significance and and it is one of the leading pharmaceutical companies in India. And if you uh, again uh, look at the markets it rules in, so in 2022-23 it derived approximately 43% of its revenues from India and around 26% from the United States. It is a very important uh, company for the in, in United States. So it it holds a significance for India. It's a very good company to look at. Basically, all the analysts are also uh, very upbeat about this company. So probably that is the reason majority of these PE firms and other pharmaceutical companies want to take it over. I I'm glad that you pointed out about PE firms you know I also wanted to understand from you have uh, PE firms also been a critical part of the growing uh, the growth in the pharma industry that we've seen in India uh, in the past do we have any instances where PEs have transformed pharma businesses and also as far as sipla is concerned what is the impact of mergers and acquisitions especially in the uh, indian pharma industry that we could take uh, extrapolate some um, you know insight into what sipla could be looking forward to uh yeah so as of now uh, we have heard of names of torrent pharma dr reddies these are the pharmaceutical countries uh, companies in india which are looking at sipla and if you look at the pe firms the private equity firms like blackstone bain capital and uh, such uh, pe firms are looking at sipla so the thing is that it depends the future course of sipla depends on who takes it over like if a pharma company takes it over then probably uh, they will uh, they will look at uh, you know maybe changing their management or functionality restructuring the company but if a pe firm takes it over it will probably infuse more capital into it so there has been a, a trend over the last uh, probably 5 to 10 years that the pe firms a lot of other pharmaceutical companies healthcare companies they all are in this uh, takeover and acquisitions and mergers spree 
so uh, we really do not know uh, as of now that who will take over sipla but mergers and acquisitions have gained prominence in the indian pharmaceutical industry and particularly after covid 19 pandemic and in the second quarter of uh, 2023 we see the indian pharma sector witnessed at least 7 pe deals with a total value of around 3.2 billion dollars so private equity investments have been reshaping businesses so if we uh, if you uh, if i want to cite an example probably mumbai based jb chemicals and pharmaceuticals is one such example uh, this this company is known for its branded formulations in cardiac gastrointestinal anti infective uh, therapeutic areas and uh, it's it's uh, it's a very good company so it was in, in J- july 2020 Uh, 2020 us based uh, private equity firm kkr acquired a 54% stake in jb pharma for around rupees 3100 uh, crores so since then jb pharma has grown from uh, 1641 crores in 2019-22 uh, rupees uh, 2884 uh, crores in 2023 after kkr took uh, a controlling stake in this company so we have been witnessing that they have been um, these companies which have been acquired by pe firms or other pharma companies have actually reshaped and you no know, gained growth in uh, a gradual uh, course of time so that is a, a trend that we are seeing so after probably after if a pe firm takes over sipla uh, they may infuse more capital in it they may create more value from uh, this particular company so that is a sure. trend that we have been seeing and uh, it, it's a space that to to watch out for so we all are waiting that who will take over sipla and uh, what will be uh, it's uh, in, in store for the, in the future absolutely and we will watch out this uh, watch out for this space and more developments taking place here as well going forward but let me now talk about stock markets and ashish is here with us uh, to talk more about what do we really expect uh, going forward from here in the ipo space that's already started to buzz quite a lot ashish there was a slow start to the year but as the markets really picked up pace we did see a lot of uh, companies coming out with their uh, fresh issues the last few months have seen heightened in action as well um, you know how has the year panned out so far and uh, you know what does uh, the market really look like right now so thank you sakshi for having me on the show now the year 2023 the current calendar year has been a very interesting year if you look at it from the primary market uh, perspective there were no issues literally zero issues in january and february and then slowly and steadily the pace picked up and if you see the current data till date uh, we have seen around nearly 35 ipos that have cumulatively raised around 27000 crore now while that may look like a big uh, number if you compare it with uh, the previous year it's still quite small because last year we saw around 40 ipos uh, and the total fund raising was around 60000 crore so we are still uh, much behind what uh, the, the number that was registered last year and if you look at uh, the year 2021 which was a record year for for ipos in that single year 2021 around 1.19 lakh crore rupees were raised through ipos so so we are still uh, lagging we are still lagging by a wide margin but uh, certainly the uh, the pace has increased if you look at august uh, around 7 ipos hit the market september so 14 so september has been uh, the last uh, month has been the best so far in the current calendar year in terms of uh, the number of ipos and this we are only talking about the main board ipos if you look at the sme segment there the level of action is is already at record levels because in the current calendar year we have already seen 135 sme ipos raising around th- th- 3500 crore which is uh, which is which is a record number because last year was just around uh, 1900 crore September alone saw 36 SME IPOs raising around 1000 crore so if you look on an average uh, uh, on an average every week 8 SME IPOs were opening every week uh, in September now another interesting trend that we have seen this year is the quantum of fresh capital that is being raised so earlier a lot of pe vc guys were looking at exiting their their uh, investments so they used to uh, you know opt for the IPO route but this year uh, there has been a huge uh, the majority quantum of fundraising has been through fresh capital of uh, uh, shares uh, unlike uh, uh, as we said unlike earlier years when pvc for them ipo was the favorite uh, uh, route to ex- make an attractive exit for their investment so uh, see uh, the year has been a very interesting one and we have seen a uh, we can see a strong pipeline as well 
Okay, so we can see a strong pipeline going forward, especially remember uh, that, you know, going forward into the months, we are going to see heightened action as far as uh, the political gamut is also placed. You know, a lot of elections will take place as well. And elections and markets always have had a very love-hate kind of a relationship. The markets always turn very volatile in anticipation of what is really going to happen. And of course, we are going to be heading to a year when we will see general elections take place as well which is the latter half of this fiscal year. What is your own expectation? Are the companies still comfortable to bring out new IPOs? And uh, or are we going to see a year where we will be much behind, like you already said, uh, from the previous year's actions as far as the IPO action is concerned? So, Sakshi, if you see the pipeline, then obviously a lot of IPOs are in the pipeline. I mean, if you uh, look at the uh, total uh, amount of uh, fundraising, uh, if you only look at the pipeline, uh, more than 80,000 crore worth of IPOs are waiting on the sidelines. There we have, and we have some really big brands as well. We have Epic Cash, Tata Technologies, we have Tata Play. Uh, and these are some of the IPOs that have already got the SEBI approval. So any company that wants to make an IPO, they have to submit the draft document to SEBI. And once you have the regulatory approval in place, you have a window of one year to launch an IPO. So names like Epic Cash, Tata Technologies, Tata Play and a lot many other names have already got their SEBI approved. They already have the SEBI approval in place so they can launch the IPO anytime now. Then there are a whole set of and a big set of uh, companies that have already filed their document and they're waiting for their uh, waiting for the SEBI approval. And there also we have some big names. You have OYO, you have NSGL, Cello World. Then you have Jan small finance banks. So there is a, a big mix of uh, companies that have already got the SEBI approval and companies that are awaiting SEBI approval. Now, uh, uh, the interesting point is that the market is very, you know, quite divided on on uh, on in terms of views on how, how big the window is for these uh, for these companies to actually hit the market. Because as you also rightly pointed out, whenever there are these elections, there is heightened volatility in the market. So a large section of the uh, market believes that most of these IPOs would try to hit the market uh, uh, by Jan Feb and wouldn't want to risk uh, uh, launching their IPO after that because any any heightened volatility or increase in volatility volatility could uh, impact uh, the market sentiments and and the I, and and their public issue as well. So we might see in the next two three months could see a lot of action in terms of IPO and then there might be some amount of slowdown. But again, it depends if. If there's not much of volatility, then uh, some of these companies may still look at March and April also in terms of uh, timing their public issues. All right. And uh, everything really depends on how the markets really move from here. We're once again looking at an uptrend building up. If uh, nothing really goes wrong uh, going forward from here, we can actually hope for the markets on a steady course going forward. And that would be conducive for the IPO market as well. Well, thank you so much, Ashish. And thank you, Neetu and Surbi, all of you for being with us on the show and sharing uh, the insights as to what can one really hope to read in this new issue of the magazine. Well, I've picked up my issue and I'd urge all our viewers to please go out on the stands the copy is already out there and a lot of insights in case you're really interested in what's really happening in various sectors of the economy this is an issue that you must definitely go for many thanks for being with us and but do stay tuned on to business today television don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also continue to engage with us on our social media platforms as well until then thanks for tuning in